Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this Soulful Nooner. Yay! Yay, Soulful Nooner! <laughs> Guess what today is? Today is No Tobacco Day. World or national? Uh, national. This is a oh. national. Maybe it's a um, World No Tobacco Day. World No, yes, it's a World No Tobacco Day. And yeah. it's a very important day for me because I believe in no smoking. <laughs> No tobacco, I should say, smoking. And um, it's really something that I'm passionate about personally in my life. Um, cigarettes have affected people in, in my family. Um, with my boyfriend, uh, he's no longer a smoker, thank goodness. I used to smoke, actually. Uh, wasn't a heavy smoker, but I'm so glad that it's out of our lives and we don't have to deal with that kind of stuff. But you that, that you're not, that you're both non-smokers? So we are both non-smokers, yes. <laughs> Non-smokers don't smoke. They don't bum cigarettes, buy cigarettes, or anything like that. That's correct, yes. And I know that it's a very vicious cycle to break, and I've even worked with clients using hypnosis to help them to stop smoking, and I have seen the effects of uh, using hypnosis. So I think maybe if we could talk a little bit about our nooner topic is kind of just alleviating toxic things in our lives. I mean, tobacco is a very toxic element. Um, it's naturally grown and we make it into something that is really disgusting for our bodies and our environment, Mother Earth and children and so on and so forth. And so maybe if we could have a little discussion about releasing some toxins or just how to stop um, smoking and if, if Greg if you've ever yes 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 I know some tips <laughs> <laughs> so let's get to it how about if we get to it let's do it people will figure out what we're talking about you know exactly um, I find it interesting as a as a motivational hypnotist and all that kind of stuff and coach that people want to make appointments for their boyfriend girlfriend daughter son um, husband, wife, mother, father, whoever, for them to quit smoking. They want someone else to make the appointment. You know, they, they want to make it for someone else. And I'm like, no, thank you. Because the person that wants to stop whatever habit it is, has to be within them to want to stop. Not because you want them to stop. And by the way, it might be annoying you because you have some other issue going on. <laughs> right with it. Yeah. yeah. So number one is if you want someone to do something like stop a habit or something it's not up to you it's up to them let's start there <laughs> right yeah I think that's an important question because I've had that um, same situation where the partner will call or someone else will call on their behalf and my first question is why aren't they calling you know how right. motivated are they I mean we have to start from them first to see where they're ready to change and go on their transformation because it really is a full-on healing um, aspect of cleansing your whole physical and mental and just the dependency on smoking. So yeah. it's really important that we have hands-on, you know, first-hand uh, knowledge from the person who, if they really want to quit. Right. And that's, that's with any habit yeah. that, whether it's addiction or... Um, just anything else, the person themselves is the ones that has to want to change, not because you want them to change or because you want them to do it for you. Uh, I know that when I work with clients and hypnosis and smoking or other challenges, it's what is it that they want? What is it they um, want to change and how will it improve them and from their perspective? And I've had people say, I don't want to quit. I'm like, great, over. <laughs> Right, yes. <laughs> but yes. then when we dig deeper, they actually showed up. Mm -hmm. So they made the appointment and they showed up. So that means they really do have something underneath and we have to find out what it is for them. So if you're, for, I know for myself, when I have a habit or if I want to start a new habit, I need to look at what's my benefit and, or what am I trying to leave behind and move towards? Because I always talk about moving forward to something. Um, so like, I know for me as a personal experience right now, I'm wanting to exercise more. Um, and I want to drop a few pounds. I just want to get more fit. And so I've tried, okay, I'm going to plank for two minutes every day. 
well, that lasted for a few weeks and then I didn't do it anymore. Why not? What is it that I need? And then I just now started to where I give myself options. I've never done this before. I have a gym membership. I have some yoga videos and stuff that I like and planking. So I can do one of three things. So I'm trying to learn for me what works for me. Everybody's different, but I'm trying to learn maybe giving myself options. I won't get bored with the same thing over and over or going to the same place. So it's about discovering for yourself in what you want in how to change. Does that make sense to you, Jennifer, what I just yeah. said? Yeah. So one thing that I wanted to go over, and this is what I teach with my clients about the five phases of change. So if you're trying to change a habit or you're trying to reach a goal, there's five phases. Okay. The first phase is pre-contemplation. And this is when you don't know that you have an issue or a problem and you're just <laughs> about it, right? Then the next uh, phase is contemplation. And you're like, oh, I should probably stop doing this. Or maybe I need to start exercising more. Or maybe I need to stop eating so much sugar, like myself. Uh, <laughs> the third phase is motivation. So you need to start figuring out what is going to motivate you. What's going to prompt you? What's going to help you move forward, like you said? What's going to be that goal? And then the fourth phase is the action. So this is when you put the new behavior or the new positive habit and you're replacing the old habit and you're putting it into action. The last phase is maintenance. And that's where you are maintaining this new thing that you've been reaching and you do it over and over again. And so I just want to bring that topic up. So if anyone is dealing with any type of habit that they want to break or they're trying to reach a goal, they're trying to let go of toxic things, whether it's people, relationships, um, or smoking, you know, you can start there and do a, a, an assessment right now and ask yourself, where are you at in this five phases of change? Because then that is going to lead you to the next step. You know, you'll know what to do if you're ready. What's so, number four? Four is action. Okay, that's where I'm at. Okay, yeah. just checking. Yeah. I'm checking the mental. <laughs> so for my sugar habit, I'm still in the second. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I, it, that's such a hard habit to break, but, I, I, you know, I don't know if it was you or I told someone, but I'm going to be detoxing after my Sun turns two, which is in two weeks. Why, that's a lot of cake day. <laughs> <laughs> and so I am now telling this out publicly, so I really have to commit. What's the date of his birthday party? His birthday party is this Saturday, the 3rd. But his birthday and the celebration and everything that were, okay, his birthday's on the 9th. And we're going to be doing activities and everything. So I want to have fun. The party's on the 9th. No, the party's on the 3rd. Okay. But you're going to go all the way to his real birthday on the 9th, and then after that, you're going to start your commitment. That's right. Thanks. So let me ask you this question since we're doing this is, yes. are you worthy of not having sugar or having a reduced sugar, whatever it is you choose? Are you worthy of that? I am worthy of it, yes. Do you know what I mean? You know what I mean by that, right? That question. I know some people are like, what do you mean? Yes. Um, sometimes we, we continue old habits uh, uh, that are necessarily healthy for us or good for us because we don't think we deserve better. And we're not talking about on a conscious level. Oh yeah, I deserve better. I deserve this. I deserve that. But what about really in that soul part of you? Mm -hmm. Why, if you know it's bad for you, why do you do that? So for me and we, we look at, well, I don't know is a lot of times is the answer. I don't know why. Well, do you feel like you deserve better? Then we have to start looking at that whole deserving aspect and worthy to also help in making the change. Because as I treat myself better, I can let go of habits that I know that aren't the best for me. And it's without judgment, by the way, because you know we go up and down and around, we all have those kinds of things, but right. you know, it's just being more conscious about what you're doing to yourself as a person in this body. Right, right. I think for me, it's not about my worthiness. It's more about um, my immediate gratification. And I've just gotten lazy, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Shall I challenge you on it? <laughs> yeah. When I got pregnant, so let me just tell you the background. When I got pregnant, you know, your food cravings change. And ever since then, like, I just have gone crazy with my the types of foods that I eat. 
And um, so since then, I never really got back on track. And now it's become my bad habit where it's whatever I want to have just to have that immediate gratification. But I think well, the whole symbolism of it on my spiritual quest of what I see it as, it's, it's part of my shadow work. It's a theme that I've had in my life, whether it's, you know, being with toxic guys or being in toxic relationships. Like I do these things and now I see it's showing up in my food habits or just my um, exercising habits. And so again, it's reminding me that I need to do, I need to make some changes. So let me ask you this question. What gets in the way that you don't make the change? What ends up being more priority than that? Uh, just my resting time. I just want something real quick. And right. I so I'm going to, I'm going to, because when we, you're saying, I don't know if it's about worthy, it's about being lazy, but I think they tie in together is that then you deserve to have that time to get stuff prepared for you, like chop the salad or whatever it is you want, so that when you have a quick moment, you already have something ready. So you deserve that. You're worthy of that. Hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like we put everything else ahead of us. Right. You're having a new schedule. You have a baby. You have your, your partner. You have business. I mean, same thing for me. I have people that come to my house. I have clients and all this kind of stuff. But if we, it's about being worthy of taking the time to say, no, this is scheduled for me to prepare my lunches or my dinners or to have these meals sitting down with family or whatever it is. And then putting, does that make sense? When I talk about the worthiness yeah. is making yeah. it that we're the priority. Yeah. And then it allows stuff. That's why you said, I don't know about that. And I said, well, let me challenge you because it, I, it's, it, and it's really just a different viewpoint, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I guess I'm going to have to work through some of that because, and this might be for some of you who are in the same situation that I am. And it's like, it's not about our worthiness. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> and I just think it all sort of comes down to that. I try to make it simple for me because I go, okay, I deserve better. So if I deserve better, then why am I not making time for me to be better? Yeah, it is a lot of just this mental awareness and, you know. The and time's just a construct, right? Isn't that the whole rabbit hole thing? Time's just not even real anyway. So why don't we, <laughs> I don't want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is just a quick nooner. So. Yeah. Can I talk about tobacco a little bit, just real quickly about um, working with people and hypnosis and stuff? There's a few things, and, and I said it earlier, is when people come to work with uh, Stop Smoking, I switch it. No, we're working to become non-smokers. There's a big difference because when you quit smoking, I'm, I, you know, I used to smoke. That means you're still identifying as a smoker that quit. Instead, let's make it, I, even if you do this on your own, you don't go see somebody, start identifying yourself as a non-smoker because they don't do certain things. Non-smokers don't buy cigarettes. They don't uh, bum cigarettes. They don't have lighters hanging around with dirty ashtrays. So you start acting as if you're a non-smoker. Um, and that'll help if you decide to quit on your own or whatever. Another thing is that um, nicotine's out of your system in about three days or so, more or less. So, um, uh, and nicotine and caffeine are, 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 are ride the, the nicotine rides on the caffeine. So if you're a caffeine drinker, like coffee and stuff with your cigarette and everything, it's been cut in half all the time you've been smoking. So when you decide to choose to stop smoking, Cut out, either cut out your caffeine or go to diet, whatever it is, without caffeine, or do decaf coffee, or just cut your intake in half, because people say they get jittery and stuff, because they're now getting the full impact of the caffeine that they didn't get before. Right. So that's part of it. Another thing is that you want to take, uh, you want to eat some oranges, two or three oranges, fresh oranges or grapefruits every day because you're replenishing the vitamin C that's being depleted as you're getting rid of all the nicotine and stuff in your body. Um, also, um, some people like to take B vitamins just to kind of mellow them and, and give that nutrition back to their body. And so after three or four days, it's all about your habit. It's no longer about that. Um, physical nicotine or anything like that. And, it's, and and putting things away, doing things differently. Like if you used to get up and um, read the paper in a certain place with a cigarette and a coffee or look at your iPad or whatever, go to a different spot. Do things differently. Start changing your habits all around you 
to just release that habit of having the cigarette. And I know that some people think of them as their best friend. They've been through everything with them. And I want to taste, tell them is, um, or ask them is, if your best friend put poison in your breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day secretly, would you still want them as your best friend? Right. So they don't think of it as that. Um, another thing really quickly is what will come up for many people is that they're now, uh, it's, it's a crutch to be comfortable. So really there's underlying issues or challenges about self-confidence or whatever it is, or fears that are now time to deal with those instead of just relying on a cigarette, which is not really doing anything but, you know, putting in toxins and making you feel like there's a shield, but you're just the same person, just, just something to do with your fingers. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, those, those are very good tips. I love the idea of the oranges and the grapefruit and the vitamin D. Um, yeah. I have and just, you that. know, thinking of yourself as a non-smoker, not someone that quit smoking, but being a non-smoker. Right, right. Just that shift in thought and words sometimes make a big difference. And I also, and to add to that, I also remind them and prompt them that they are successful. They have had challenges in their life before and they've succeeded. So going through their timeline, like if they had a struggle in school, you know, they eventually figured out a solution, you right. know, first finding out what their successes are, what their success stories are. And then when I'm starting the, the hypnosis, you know, um, incorporating some of that. So it's reminding them like, oh yeah, I am successful. I can uh, stop quitting. You know, it, it does help to, to feel, it makes that connection that they have accomplished something before and they can right. why wouldn't they accomplish this and even as basic as well at one point you didn't even know how to dress yourself you didn't even know how to put your shoes on but you eventually learned how so I'm sure that was a struggle so. <laughs> right right so I mean yeah, there's, yeah there's many reasons behind it just start doing some introspection while you you know, decide to, if you choose to, stop whatever it is, this tobacco or something else, because you're doing it, you're getting something out of it that no longer serves you. Or a lot of times it's a habit that we learned that worked and no longer works now. Yes. That's all. Now, how, yeah. how would you, what kind of tips or what kinds of, uh, I don't know, information that you could share about people's environments, whether it's about tobacco or just anything that's poisonous or toxic for you, you know, what if you don't have the supportive environment? What if it's the environment that enables these bad habits? I need, I need, I need a little more that's uh, general for me. I need a more specific. Enabling like, you know, um, you're talking about toxic and, you know, so you have something in mind. So let's say um, like a toxic relationship, mm -hmm. you know, and this person, let's say a person is in a toxic relationship and it didn't start with just their partner. I mean, it's in their family. There's no boundaries. There's no, like, no one has any, no one can say no to each other. Everyone's in everyone's business. And it's expected that you cross over into each other's business. And so now that they come from that environment, they're finding it hard to let go of this toxic relationship because it's already been embedded in them. It's part of a habit of, of thinking that, you know, um, there needs to be dysfunction or there needs to be. Yeah, okay. So in this example that you're saying, does the person know that there's toxic issues? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. I would say go get the book, The Four Agreements, <laughs> That's a good one. and start yeah. there, and start reading that about not taking things personally and not making assumptions and 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 extracting yourself from situations. Find someone that you that isn't toxic. You're gonna have to start making new relationships because if you're not happy in those relationships, you have to have a, you you know you leave something behind for something else. So you got to let go of who you are to become who you want to be, and. It takes effort. A lot of people just want to take a pill, so to speak, or the yeah. metaphorical pill, and it's all done. But it's all about effort and wanting and making steps. There's no such thing as skipping steps. It's just life, you know? Right, right. 
<laughs> and if you're watching this now, you know, please share with uh, what habits that you have broken or what habits that you're struggling with, or maybe you are a sm smoker and you want to become a non-smoker and you want to learn how to quit, you know, please comment below and tell us, you know, what you're looking for and we can hook you up and help you. Yeah. So happy, uh, no tobacco day. <laughs> Happy no tobacco day. And um, I think we're done. Are we done, Jen? Uh, I wanted to give some statistics really. Okay. Quick. So um, for tobacco, tobacco kills more than 7 million people each year. Is that nationally or internationally or worldwide? Uh, that's worldwide. Okay. And uh, more than 6 million of these deaths are the result of direct tobacco use, while around 890,000 are the result of non-smokers being exposed to secondhand smoke. Wow. And nearly 80%, this I found surprising, nearly 80% of the world's more than 1 billion smokers live in low and middle income countries. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess that doesn't surprise me, but... You know, when you see the numbers, that's like really huge. Well, do you want to talk about corporations and who they prey upon to make their money? And <laughs> I know exactly, exactly. So, well, I thank you all so much for joining us for our uh, nooner today. And soulful nooner. Our soulful nooner, yes. And if you have any questions, uh, please comment below. And Greg, how can we continue? I'm learning more about what you're doing right now. Or uh, you can go to hypnosisla.com or email me, greg at hypnosisla.com or like or follow me on Facebook. Uh, and there you go. Awesome. And you can learn more about me. You can go to my website at www.jenniferescalera.com or you can also like my Facebook page, Jennifer Escalera. And um, I'm also on Instagram at Kosha Wellness. And I'll put the information below this video. So we'll see you next time. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye.